with Cambridge O-Level Alternate to Practical Physics Paper of Variant 5054-04 and this is a specimen paper for year 2023. Let's move to the question number one. And it states that a student investigates the effects of varying the amount of light reaching uh, a light dependent resistor LDR. She sets up the apparatus as shown in figure 1.1. So you guys know this thing when there is a earlier so this means the brightness increases or so resistance decreases and when the brightness decreases the resistance is going to be increased. Figure 1.2 shows the reading on the voltmeter when the light source is turned on and sw uh, the switch is closed. Uh, record the reading on the voltmeter on the answer uh, on the answer line and in the first row of table 1.1. So here it is like 3.1, 3.2 volts. The student uses this range to add 2 cm cube of colored liquid to the water in the beacon and stir the mixer. Explain why the student must stir the two liquids together. So uh, why he is going to stir the liquid, the reasons are so it's going to be the color of the liquid is uniform uh, or you can say evenly distributed and uh, when you mix this liquid uh, when you mix the color water or color liquid into the water so uh, you will be getting a stable volt reading because otherwise it will be uneven and the very uh, the reading on the voltmeter will be fluctuating the student continues to add 2 cm cube of colored liquid to the water at the time. Record each new reading in the table 1.1. So we have already worked on, on this. This is 3.2 volts. The uh, units are given. No need to mention those. Uh, on the figure 1.3, plot the graph of the voltmeter reading against the volt, uh, volume of the colored liquid and draw the best fit diagram. So again, what you have to do is you have to use those values and the uh, y-axis is already labeled. There will be uh, voltmeter reading and on the x-axis there will be the volume of the liquid in, the, in centimeter cubes. So you guys have to use this data uh, on the y-axis and this is will be on the x-axis. So let me plot these graphs values over here. So when you guys are going to plot the values that the graph would be like this. Mine is sort of uh, not uh, perfect. So uh, whenever because it's a tablet. So when you are going to draw it, so it should be a properly curved smooth graph. Draw a tangent to the curve at 5 cm cube. Calculate the gradient of the tangent. Show you working and indicate on the graph the values that you have. Uh, that you use. So basically uh, again you have to draw the lines with the scale and the gradient will be at 5 and you have to uh, just uh, the the point the line will be touching that point. So now you have to take the gradient by taking these two points or you can take the whole numbers point as well in the graph. So let's do this. After doing the calculations, you will end up with this uh, value because uh, the graph was like this. And if you draw the tangent, so let me change the color at 5. So if you guys are going to draw the tangent on this, let's suppose this is a straight line. So this point is like uh, your this point. And this is going to be... Basically, the graph was like this. So this is going to be your this point on the curve. Okay, describe one precaution taken to ensure that the reading from the voltmeter is accurate. So one, uh, first of all, what you are going to do is you have to check the zero error in order to make accurate reading. Zero. Okay, error. Then you have to tap the meter. in case if needle is stuck so sometime it is like the, this the voltmeter needle is stuck so you need to tap it 
so that it can uh, show the reading properly another student performed the same experiment he calculated the gradient which is slightly different to the value you obtained in c2 so it is two variables that are difficult to control that may result in different gradients so first of all it's going to be the intensity of the light and that may change may change then is the level of the background uh, brightness level of the background brightness or you can say the light again then there, there might be a problem like uh, the distance between light source and ldr so this is also one of the reason that the values may be differ and the consistency of watercolor so these are the four reasons so you guys can write any of the two moving to the next question A student investigates the effect of two lenses on the size of a shadow. He sets up the apparatus as shown in the figure. Mm -hmm. uh, and the student uses a small connected, a small lamp connected to a 3-volt power supply. He attached the clamp, holding the lamp to the highest position on the stand. In this position, the distance Z between the lamp and the bench is 56.5 cm. He places one of the glass lamps in the jaws of the clamp at a distance of x equals to 20 cm below the lamp. Describe two precautions he takes to ensure the apparatus is set up safely. So the first of all he is going to do uh, make sure uh, the weight to prevent stand toppling. Because the stand is like this and you are using your apparatus over here so there should be proper weight over here so that it should not topple in this way or in this direction then uh, you can also write down the voltage not more than lamp bulb rating obviously if the voltage is more than the bulb rating so it's going to be like uh, fused it may not work lens clamp securely because again if it is moving so uh, there may be chances of falling down apparatus away from the bench and it should be like edge of the bench it would be right uh, then again uh, while not in between the apparatus movement due to lamp and the lens molding uh, clay should be balanced so you guys can write any of the two reasons out of these a student switches on a lamp, the lamp lights and the modeling clay produces a shadow on the graph paper. He holds the lens under the lamp when this lens is touching the, la the lamp. The diameter D of the shadow of the modeling clay from the graph paper is 2 mm. The student moves the second lens down toward the uh, clamped lens. He observed the change in D. He records his observation as shown in figure 2.2. The D decreases as the second lens moves away from the lamp. The D, the shadow of the D disappears from the view at x equals to 9. And this, by looking at this data, which is given in the question, the graph would be like this. Because at 2 uh, mm of distance, uh, they will be like, uh, the values will be at 9. And then it's, uh, the, it disappeared, the shadow disappeared for 1 second. And then again, it's going to be this. 
The student removes the modeling clay from the clamp lens. He keeps the lamp at the top of uh, the stand. He can see an image of the lamp on the graph paper on the bench. He adjusts the position of the clamps until the image is uh, as small as bright as possible. He finds that he cannot position the clamp lens so that the image see seen on the graph paper is in focus. The image is as small and bright as possible when x equals to 27.6. Calculate y. So going back to the diagram. So if you see this, y equals to z minus x, 56.5 minus 27.6. So the answer will be 28.9 centimeters. So I'm going to write this over here. This is 9. A student suggests that the focal length f of the lens can be calculated by using an equation uh, this okay so uh, now we have to calculate the value for this and the values will be like 27.6 28.9 divided by 27.6 plus 28.9 the focal length will be 14.1 centimeter State why the arrangement of the apparatus shown in figure 2.1 cannot be used to accurately determine the focal length. So we can uh, because uh, uh, we are unable to get unable to get sharp image. Okay, suggest how the arrangement of the apparatus can be changed in order to uh, accurately determine the focal length of the clamp lens. So it can be like uh, using a longer rod so that distance between lamp and paper Uh, lamp and paper uh, in order to get sharp image a student investigate the oscillation of a mass attached to the meter rule and this is the uh, major she attached to this the diameter and the width of this measure the length and the uh, width of this so again putting the scale so uh, along this side to get the diameter um, and putting on the scale on this side so you will get the readings about the parallax parallax error or use the set square rule so the readings will be around 3.9 uh, units will be centimeter 1.1 will be the thickness of this and this is going to be like this the student six Take the pair of masks together and secure them to the end of the meter rule using a decipher. Put a part of the scale at the end of the rule is covered by the masses as shown in figure 3.2. Describe a method to determine the position of the center of the mass on the meter rule. So it's going to be uh, basically uh, the center of uh, mass x uh, in the center. So if you do this thing 0 plus uh, this is the whole diameter and so it's going to be you can say this thing this is going to be radius zero plus half of the diameter half of diameter or you can use zero plus radius so just why the student does not attach mass to the lower side of the meter rule obviously it will not able to stand not able to hold masses and masses likely to fall The other end of the meter rule is attached to the bench as shown in the figure. Small piece of wood uh, is there, the meter rule is there, the mass is the clap. The edge of the bench is 10 centimeter 
uh, mark on the meter rule and uh, then determine the distance l along the rule from the edge of the bench to the point on the rule directly let's use your reading show your work okay you can see this thing this distance is 10 centimeter just hold on my mistake that i have made a little longer line so this is basically your 10 centimeter this is a meter rule so this the whole length of this is like 100 centimeter this is your 10 centimeter so obviously this is going to be a uh, 90 and remember this thing that this is your the, the diameter so if you do this thing so 100 minus 10 minus 1.95 which is basically uh, the half of 3.9 divided by 2 is the basically radius of the masses which we have calculated in uh, our previous question so if you do this so this will end at 88.05 so this will be 88.1 if you round it off to this the student lifts the free end of the meter rule until the rule is approximately horizontally horizontal then she releases the rule and observes the mass oscillating she measures the time taken for 20 oscillations she repeats the procedure once more and records the time like this so determine the time for one oscillation 10.56 plus 10.51 so you divide it by 2, so it will be your 0 0.526, and if you round it out, 0 0.53 seconds will be your answer. The student repeats her experiment for more uh, for four more values of L by moving the masses along the top surface of the meter rule. In the table, you have to complete the value. So again, it is going to be 88.1. And this is going to be when you are talking about time, 0 0.53 will be your value. And in the next question, he is asking to draw the curve. So obviously, if you draw the curves as per these values, which is quite easy. So it's going to be the curve would be like somewhat in, in this shape. Uh, this is going to be like you have to find out for the 60 thing so this is going to be like your 60 and then you have to find out the value from this and it's going to be 0 0.345 so I have told you the solution for the next question so it's going to be like this and this 0 0.345 will be written just the answer for this one 0 0.345 okay explain why it is not practical for the student to reduce the value of l to less than 40 centimeter again there will be too many oscillations to count with the uh, uh okay i'll write it down too many oscillations to count with certainty period of oscillation is too short to count with repeatability okay moving to the next question and it says that a student places a small metal container inside a large metal container as shown in the figure there and there is a gap uh, in this two container and the effect of the size of the gap is this so you guys can read this question i'll will be writing these things the apparatus used uh, are these You can use any uh, other apparatus this you are not required to in the plan is cleaning privacy and just draw the where is necessary so i will be writing these over here so this is how we are going to uh, start off with this experiment uh, by putting specific volume of hot water in a smaller container and placing it in an again smaller container uh, which is going to be like uh, placing the smaller container in a larger container and then you use the thermometer 
in a small container when the temperature is in the 70 degree celsius start the stopwatch and when it is 60 degree celsius you stop the stopwatch so repeat the experiment and you draw this table and when then you are going to draw this graph which is going to be the temperature time versus graph and the gradient will be showing the rate of cooling and the parameter which you are controlling are same in volume of the hot water same room temperature and same starting temperature of the water so this is it thank you very much